Hello again. This is our last overview video for the leading through rapid change topic. There is an idiom that is used in the United States that says it's always darkest before the dawn. This seems to fit well when we've been in the chaos phase for a long time and feel like it will never end. We know we must change, but we can't quite yet see a new solution. This is that intersection between the second phase, or chaos, and the third one, where new ideas and creativity and possible solutions start to emerge. We all know these phases of change from our own lives. For example, have you had the situation where you knew you were in a wrong career or studying the wrong major, but you couldn't quite yet see what you should do? You are in transition between these two phases. I want to encourage you to support yourself and others when we are in this darkest space by reminding us that we've gone through other changes before and we made it through and we can make it through again. Your belief in the process of change can be contagious for those that you work with. In this video, I wanna give you some tips to help everyone to continue to adapt and evolve as the third stage becomes possible. As a system incorporates new information, it will eventually emerge into the third phase of adaptation or creativity. It feels like we can see the light at the end of a tunnel, the end of the chaos tunnel, and a new spring or a new beginning is coming. I've added a photo here of a tunnel under a road uh, uh, from a pilgrimage route in Spain. There is a mural at the end of the tunnel that says, Good Journey or Buen Camino. We are still on the adventure through change when we hit this third stage. When we incorporate the new information uh, that we've been called to as part of this change and the chaos externally starts to calm, we'll start to have new ideas. Uh, it's important to remember that in this phase, many of our ideas that we brainstorm will not survive. Um, and we just need to open ourselves to listen to possibilities. This can be overwhelming and create fear as we recognize that we need to change and we're not quite sure what approach we should take. Uh, you'll feel the energy of the group start to shift from the second to the third stage, we'll, we'll start to feel more positive. But there's also an urgency that comes to now find a solution. As the group and the external environment settle enough to consider solutions, our work as leaders is to foster as much creativity as possible so that we open ourselves to the best possible solutions. By fostering a culture of dialogue, and inclusion, we call forth everyone's best thinking. When I am leading in this phase, I draw upon the advice from the Art of War that says we want to look for solutions that have the most sure, or S-H-I-H. -H. A sure filled solution is both powerful and simple. For example, if we needed to keep malaria vaccines cool, refrigerated in sub-Sahara Africa. We might brainstorm solutions in this phase that are expensive and that need a lot of technology. Or we might take a small terracotta pot and put it in a slightly larger terracotta pot and put water in between the two. And for a few dollars, we'll have refrigeration. This is a solution that has a lot of sure. It's elegant and simple and powerful. We can get easily overwhelmed in this phase because we think we must find the perfect solution the first time. But as we've discussed earlier in this course, we instead want to find an approach just to try as a prototype. To reduce my own stress when I'm developing a new initiative, I tell myself, this is just an experiment. In this way, we can try and remember uh, the importance of reflection and feedback from our team and those we serve. We want to flow through the change process easily again and again and, and, and have it be an iterative process so that we can integrate new information 
and gain um, new ideas from our final phase when we implement, and then we come back again and try something new. Another tip when you're guiding through change is to notice what others must leave behind to adapt. So you might want to have a party to celebrate endings, the end of a certain project, or acknowledge that a particular project as provided to a group. We know from brain research that if we create a ritual and signal an end to an old identity or an old project, we're more apt to move on. We need to celebrate our endings. When others get stuck in this phase of change, you will notice they get overwhelmed by the options. Our work here is to calm the overwhelm. Uh, one way is to get everyone organized. Uh, we can use program management disciplines and project planning to create structure. When we use dialogue, we want to use ground rules that create a structure around our brainstorming. Um, we also want to model how to get comfortable with prototyping and experimenting. To do this, first we want to create an environment where we welcome mistakes. And second, we want to create comfort uh, by learning in public ourselves. How might you be transparent when you're trying something new, when you make a mistake, and what are you learning from it? Uh, is we model as well constant communication and transparency in every phase. This allows the system to continue to learn and adapt more quickly. For an organization that is modeling these system thinking approaches in the social se sector, I want to refer you to IDEO and their human-centered de design philosophy. Change is indeed messy, risky, and scary. It can be hard to let go of what was comfortable and open ourselves to the new. So to close this topic, I quote the poet Mary Oliver, to pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. Thank you for your willingness and your bravery to keep paying attention and calling us all to creativity. May your work Help us to solve the complex challenges of our times.